Every year, thousands of Hindu devotees come to visit the sacred Kailash Parvat and Mansarovar Lake, situated in the China's autonomous region of Tibet, from across the globe, especially neighboring country India via Nepal. Tibet is the world's highest plateau, which is surrounded by Himalayan range in the south, Karakoram range in the west and Kunlun mountain in the north. Tibet is taken as a unique land because of its climate, height and land structure. It has so many high mountains and it is also the source place of many rivers like Brahmaputra, Indus, Ganga, Meikhang, Yangtze, Huangho and so on. Most of the pilgrims travel to China's autonomous region Tibet via Nepal's route because it is the shortest and easiest. Pilgrims and team of Swami Narayananda Balaji Temple, San Jose, California, United States of America, coming for Kailash Mansarovar Lake tour are humbly welcomed by Mr. Ganesh Nyopani, the managing director of Monte Rosa Treks and Expedition Private Limited. Pilgrims are welcomed with flowers and Rudraksha garland at Trivuvan International Airport in Kathmandu and are taken to Hotel Radisson, a deluxe five-star for accommodation. In the evening time, pilgrims are taken to Pashupatinath Temple for Arati Darshan. They are well guided by religious guide who clarifies them about the importance of the temple. Arati and to have divine view of Lord Pashupatinath. The currently appeared Pashupatinath has been mentioned in the Veda, sacred scriptures of the Hindus, while other Jyotir Linga has been mentioned only in the mythological books. According to this, Tatpurus is at east, Sadhojat is at west, Bamdev is at north, and Aghor is at south, and Ishan is at upright side inside Pashupatinath temple. All these forms are lively visible besides Ishan, which cannot be seen by our virtual eyes. Next day, early in the morning, Kailash pilgrims are taken to Pashupatinath for Rudra consecration called Rudravishek. Eleven Brahmins or priests prepare for fire offering home in the pavilion Mandap and do Sankalpa Puja in the beginning, followed by Swasti Bachan preaching, Nyas. Rudra preaching and Mahamritunja death victory puja. The word Rudra, meaning fearful Lord Shiva, has come from Rudravi Sheikh, Rudranti Iti Rudri, Rudri Yogi metal. It means there is pain, violence, greed among people in this earth, and we perform religious hymn in praise of God Shiva so that he escapes people from all these miseries of life and grants justice, good health, prosperity, peace and salvation. 
This is why Rudri is done for peaceful life. After performing entire rituals at Pashupatinath, pilgrims return back to hotel. At noon, after lunch, they are taken to have divine view darshan of Burani Lakanta Vishnu Temple. Swayambhunath Stupa and Bodhanath Stupa. After having our breakfast in the hotel at Kathmandu, we move towards Trivuvan International Airport at around 8.30 in the morning. We take one hour 30 minute flight to land at the Gongar airport of Tibet. Time passes so quickly, enjoying the views of marvelous Himalayan ranges along with the world's highest peak, Mount Everest, while being on this flight. It takes around one hour to reach Lasha city from Gongar airport via means of transportation. The amazing scenes of naked hills, settlement at the bottom of hills, agricultural land full of crops make our journey more enjoyable. Then we reach hotel and take rest. There are four-star luxury hotels at Lhasa. Also, there are Nepali restaurants with Nepali and Indian cuisine. We manage vegetarian food for our pilgrims in these restaurants as all of our pilgrims are vegetarians. On the second day, we visit the palace of Dalai Lama the Potala Palace, Zongkhang Monastery, Barkhor Bazaar, which are the worthy and attractive places to visit in Lhasa. Lhasa is the capital as well as the biggest city of Tibet. This city with wide roadways, sky-kissing buildings is not less attractive than any developed Western countries. Lhasa city is at an altitude of 3,600 meters above sea level. The Potala Palace lies at the middle part of Lhasa city and it is situated in a place at 150 meters height. The palace is also the adjoining place of meditative office building and administrative office building. The red palace symbolizes meditation whereas the White Palace 
signifies transparent administration. In Tibetan language, Lhasa means the land of gods and goddesses. The Potala Palace was built at the time of Songtsan Gompo in the 7th century. The 5th Dalai Lama extended the palace to its present size. At this time, it also succeeded in becoming the residing, the main political and religious palace of the Dalai Lama. There are gold-plated entombment plays of the 5th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th Dalai Lama at Potala Palace. All these can be seen besides 13th Dalai Lamas. Entombment of the 6th Dalai Lama is yet unknown and mysterious. Likewise, Experts say that the funeral rites of the 1st, 2nd, 3rd and 4th Dalai Lama was done at Zongkang Monastery and then the ashes were kept safely there. The current 14th Dalai Lama is living in India since 1959. After spending two nights at the capital city of Tibet, our journey to Kailash Mansarovar begins by traveling in our coach. From Lhasa, one hour drive takes us to Brahmaputra River and by passing on the riverside way, we reach to Singhatse. It is the second biggest city after Lhasa. There are fine luxury hotels for lodging and we have arranged a meal for our pilgrims in a Nepali restaurant. Here is a huge monastery which is popularly known as Tashilimpu Monastery. After sightseeing for some times, our journey proceeds towards Saga. Observing beautiful scenario with uncovered hills, cultivated crops at the bottom of hills, passing through Latse and looking at the roadway to Everest Base Camp. We reach to Saga Market after 10 hours. There are four-star hotels for accommodation. This very beautiful place is Saga Bazaar. This bazaar has many facilities such as electricity, telephone, hotels, etc. We stay two nights here to acclimatize and overcome high altitude sickness. After two nights stay at Saga, we move forward and reach to the adjoining point of Brahmaputra River. Brahmaputra is basically formed from the amalgamation of two rivers, one flowing from Gandhi Sea River of Himalayan range and other is Tima Yangzhong River flowing from Tibetan Himalayan ranges and flow through Saga, Sigatse and other places at Tibet and ultimately gets mixed into the Gulf of Bengal. Passing Dongba, Prayang. Here we stop our van or bus and have our lunch. After lunch, driving continues. We reach at Hor, near the holy lake Mansarovar, observing beautiful scenes and naked hills. From here, 
we can have the fantastic view of Mansarovar Lake, Mount Gurla Mandata and Kailash Parvat. The Mansarovar Lake circumambulation is of a total of 102 kilometers distance. According to the local people, it takes three days to circumambulate for local residents, but it takes five to seven days for the tourists or pilgrims by walking. This is the place called Hor, and from here, the circumambulation of Mansarovar Lake begins. We should travel via blue bus organized by Nangri Tourism Board. It is strictly compulsory to travel by blue bus while circumambulating Mansarovar Lake. The lake is very beautiful. We cannot identify the other part of the lake by our bare eyes. Ducks are playing and swimming in the edge of the lake. We reach to Chiu Monastery after approximately two hours driving from Hor. There are mud-built lodges and guest houses. This is the guest house that we have chosen to stay here. Mansarovar Lake also known as Brahma's Lake or Mapam Yumtso Lake is situated at an elevation of 4850 meters above sea level. The word Manas means mind or consciousness and Sarovar means lake. It has held deep spiritual influence and wide religious implications among Hindus and Buddhists. Making round of the lake and taking a dip in it is believed to purge one's soul from sins and the body from sickness. This lake is so gigantic that it takes three full days to just go around its peripheries. Ancient Hindu scriptures indicate this lake as a must-visit place for someone who wants to attain salvation, the highest level of achievement in Hindu religion. The cascading waves of the lake in the wind look very charming. As described in Ramayana, it is said that the person who moves around the Mansarovar lake and bathes with its pure water reaches the heaven directly after death. Similarly, it is written that the person who drinks the water of this lake recognizes the Shiva Lok, the palace of Lord Shiva. Kailash Parvat is situated about 58 kilometers far in the north from Mansarovar Lake. According to Hindu traditional heresy, it is believed that Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati take bath each day at 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. in this lake. It is said that pilgrims who stay at this place at night, they can lively watch the God there. Mainly it is believed that people can see or visit the god Shiva and goddess Parvati at the night of full moon. This Mansarovar lake covers a very large area that is pure place. It is mentioned in Hindu religious books that all the Hindus must reach there at least once in their lifetime. Next day, in the morning, pilgrims are going to Mansarovar Lake riding on the bus or walking from the guest house or mud houses. Pilgrims are seen taking holy dip into the lake, offering water, flowers, money to the God and splashing water among each other with much joy 
and enthusiasm. All the pilgrims are seen meditating for Lord Shiva and reciting the names of their ancestral gods, performing homes, offering grains mixed with butter to the fire in the name of gods in order to relieve themselves from any kind of sins which they might have committed knowingly or unknowingly. After completing homes, they are exchanging happiness by cuddling each other, much to the amusement of the onlookers. Everybody is doing arati, oil-fed lamps, and praying by joining their hands. As the weather is clear today, pilgrims are able to gaze upon the beautiful Mansarovar Lake and Kailash Parvat comfortably. After bathing at Mansarovar Lake, we return back to hotel riding on bus. Pilgrims now are heading towards Darchin, and we stop for a while in front of Chiu Monastery and observe Kailash Parvat, Mansarovar and Rakshas Lake. Rakshas Tal, Monster Lake. This lake is named on the basis of Hindu traditional story. Hindu people believe that carnivorous monsters are hiding into the dark water. On the basis of this belief, people call it Rakshas Tal and stay away from this lake, believing it as the symbol of dark and destructive power. According to traditional religious story, the water of this lake is poisonous and fatal. So, to replace the poisonous water of this lake, a tunnel was made from Mansarovar Lake. The pure water of this lake and a golden fish was sent in this lake. Late, this fish was found alive. From it, people's negative attitude towards the lake changed and they started to go nearer to it, but they still don't drink the water. According to Hindu mythology, in Treta Yug, the monster Ravana has made Lord Shiva happy meditating in this lake. Rakshas Lake lies in the west to Mansarovar Lake. It is situated at an altitude of 4,540 meters above the sea level. In Mansarovar Lake, there are many birds, including ducks. But in Rakshas Lake, there are no any birds at all. Now we are going towards Darchen. Darchen is also known as the Golden City located at the base of Kailash Parvat. When we reach at Darchin, we directly entered into the four-star hotel Kailash Himalaya. We get off the coach and move towards the room and rest for some time. Today, we are preparing for Kailash circumambulation or Kora. We get into the bus and move towards Yamadwar, observing Darchen city. It takes 20 minutes for blue bus to reach there as it is at the distance of only 7 kilometers. This place is also known as Tarboche. Getting off from the bus at Yamadwar all the pilgrims are offering to Lord Shiva. Then we moved around the Yamadwar for three times. According to Hindu religion, this place is known as the gate of the God of Death, Yamadwar. From here, physically disabled pilgrims distantly pay homage to Kailash Parvat and return home because the visit of Yamadwar is believed to get equally religious gain as they do for Kailash Parvat itself. Journey on foot begins from Yamadwar. 
this path, trail, is somehow busy with pilgrims, horses, local porters, yaks, and Nepali workers. The sacred religious place Kailash Parvat is located on the height of 6,714 meters above sea level. This region is supposed to be at the most pure religious place. It is supposed to be the central part of the world and origin of the world before the origin of Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism. Kailash Parvat is glorified in the holy books like Ramayana and Mahabharata. According to the ancient Asian stories, the civilization is incomplete without the description of Kailash Parvat. Kailash Parvat is located in Tibet. Scientific research of this region is not satisfactory. Different religious groups like Shaiva, Hindu, Buddhist, Jain and Bonpo are respecting Kailash equally though they explained it differently. In the Shaiva and Buddhist traditional literature, Kailash is described as the part of Sumeru which is supposed to be the center of the world. It is believed to be the residence of Lord Shiva and his wife Parvati as per Hindus. Buddhists respect it in the name of Kang Rinpoche. Buddhists have accepted Kailash and Mansarovar as great natural mandala. Mandala for them is the means of respect and salvation. Jains worship as Ashtapal for this isolated peak. The founding father of this religion, Rishavdev, had got spiritual salvation in the same place. The total periphery of Mount Kailash is 53 kilometers and pilgrims should walk 38 kilometers within three days. As described in Hindu myth, a person who moves around the Kailash Parvat will be free from all the sins made in lifetime. If they move round the Parvat for 108 times, they directly get Nirvana. It is also said that a person who moves Nandi once, he or she gets return as equal of moving around the Kailash for 13 times. We start our journey for three days from Yamadwar. The necessary stuffs were carried by yaks, porters and horses. Those who need horses and porters have to request Tibetan guide at least two days earlier for booking. Those who can't walk on their foot can visit it riding on horse as well. From Yamadwar, we go to Tading Jongkhang after three hours walking through the bank of Lachu River for a lunch spot. The western face of Kailash Parvat is clearly seen from here. Below the Parvat, we can see a huge stone or portrayed elephant shape which is also called Airavat. It is believed God Indra road on it. After two hours long walk, we can reach to Dirapuk. There is a Dirapuk monastery situated on the edge of Lachu River. The name of this place is given from the name of monastery itself. This monastery is located on the height of 4,900 meters above sea level. The scene of Kailash from here is like the heaven. Hundreds of pilgrims arrive at Dirapuk from Yamadwar riding on the horse or on their foot. 
Kailash Parvat is regarded as the form of Lord Shiva and the water flowing from its snowy tip is worshipped as Holy River Ganges or Ganga. Walking for about three hours steep upward, we can reach at the bottom of this holy mountain. This is called Kailash Touch Tour. It means religiously touching the feet of Lord Shiva. Shisha Pangma Guest House is on the one side of Dirapuk, which is by the side of the river Lachu, flowing from Tibet, whereas Dirapuk Monastery is at another side. Mount Kailash can be observed more beautifully from the side of this monastery. Observing from Dirapuk, Mount Kailash is seen in between Mount Manjushri at the right side and Mount Bajrapani on the left side. River Ganges originated from Mount Kailash meets Lachu River and gets mixed into Rakshas Lake. Today we have to go for Dolmala or Dormala Pass 5,636 meters and the weather is also suitable. So, after breakfast, we move towards Dolmala or Dormala Pass following our Tibetan guide. After one and a half hour walking from Dirapuk, we arrived at Shivasthal. Here, people can offer old clothes. The normal route for Kailash circumambulation is through Ganesh Kunda, Dolmala or Dormala and Gauri Kunda. This scene is of Dormala Pass. This is on the height of 5,636 meters from the sea level. This is the tallest and most exciting place of our journey. People can worship here. Our pilgrims are busy in capturing photographs. In this pass, people may suffer from headache and vomiting, but it becomes normal as soon as they climb down. After walking down for 10 minutes, we can see Gauri Kunda. According to one legend, Lord Shiva is believed to have taken bath together with his consort Parvati at Gauri Kunda. So, it is believed as the bathing pond of Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati. <laughs> Walking steep downward for about one hour from Dormala Pass or Dolmala Pass, we reach to Sapchidatok. Pilgrims riding horse should walk the distance from Dormala Pass to Sapchidatok as the way is quite difficult and steep. There are three tiny tea shops at Sapchidatok where we relax with a sip of tea and also drink water. After resting for some time, we again move forward. The route after this is straight forward and we can also ride horse from here. Three hours of walking takes us to Juthulpuk that is known as the least facilitated place of this journey. This is the second day of our circumambulation. On the next day, we begin to move early in the morning after having our breakfast. After walking for three hours, we reach to Chongdo. Our trekking ends from this place
as we can travel by vehicles from here. Unloading all our stuffs from the yak, we farewell the caretakers of yak and reach Darchen. During three-day Kailash Parikrama or Kailash Round, one can see four faces of Kailash Parvat which are South Face, West Face, North Face and East Face. Pilgrims can do worship or darshan of four different faces of Kailash Parvat. We always try to keep our guests happy and satisfied. Therefore, we have managed for well-behaving, friendly human resource with best cooks for serving tasty food to our valuable guests. After taking our day meal, we proceed towards Mansarovar Lake. Pilgrims fetch sacred water of Mansarovar and move forward we follow the same way to Tsaga, Sigatse and Lasha. Finally, we take a flight from Lhasa to Kathmandu and transfer to the hotel. The journey of Kailash and Mansarovar is very important, not only from religious point of view, it is equally significant from the perspective of tourism. The management of this journey is made by Monte Rosa Treks and Expedition Private Limited, situated in Kathmandu, Nepal. We are waiting for you to join us for such an exciting and unforgettable trip in the future and other adventures like mountain flight, trekking, Holy tour in Nepal, peak climbing tour, jungle safari, white water rafting, and mountaineering. Atithi Devo Bhava, guest is God.